The hits keep coming for the Cincinnati Bengals. Very active on day one of the tampering window. I'm Jake Lisko. He's James Rapine. We're the Locked On Bengals podcast. Welcome into another emergency episode on day one of the negotiating or tampering window. Whatever you want to call it as the Bengals continue to make headlines and make moves. Larry Ogunjobi will not be a Bengal, it looks like, in 2022. But BJ Hill will be back and the Bengals have signed another offensive lineman, Ted Karras, from the New England Patriots. Let's start with Karras. I think it's Karras. It might be Karras. He comes it from... It's Karras. He comes from the Illinois Fighting Illini, drafted in the sixth round by the New England Patriots in 2016. Spent the first few years of his career as a backup. Turns 29, James, tomorrow. Depending on when you're listening to this, 29... On March 15th, so wish the newest Bengal a happy birthday. I guess they can't say he's officially a Bengal yet, but he's agreed to terms a three-year, $18 million deal. Like I said, spent the first few years of his career as a backup before taking over a starting job in New England, then in Miami, then back in New England, has great positional versatility, can play anywhere on the interior, has spent entire years starting at center, where he will probably play for the Bengals, and then back with the Patriots in 2021, played some left guard for most of the year as well. Huge. This is huge because you were looking at the center market, and I know I was, and I was like, all right, are they going to overspend for Bradley Bozeman? Is that where they're going to invest? Is that is that the big signing, right? And instead, it's like, oh, no, we're going to find a guy in Karras who can do both. And, you know, maybe they stumble into another center in free agency or what's probably more likely and not even that it's likely. But if Tyler Linderbaum does happen to be there at 31, right, Jake, that's something we talked about. I know off air, I think on air. Well, Karis can play left guard. He can slide right in there for you if you need him to. And, and that's the beauty of this, because he's a really good pass blocker. He's a veteran, a two-time Super Bowl champion, a guy who's snapped the ball to Tom Brady uh, for most of his career. In, when when that's the case, and, and he's worked with that guy, and then you look and it's like, oh, Alex Kappa, what is he? Well, he's a Super Bowl champ too, and he's also snap, uh, well, not snap the ball, but played with uh, Tom Brady. It's they're getting these guys on the right side of thirty, even though uh, Karras is a little bit older at twenty nine years old, and they're they're getting them at reasonable value. Like there's no Larry Ogunjobi. Oh my God, I can't believe he got three years, forty and a half million dollars. The Bengals didn't go that route with either of these guys where you go, Ooh, man, that's funny money that the bears are giving Larry O. And so uh, you, you have to feel good about what they've done up to this point. And uh, both guys will obviously uh, be penned in as, as starters on this offensive line and, and on the interior where the Bengals were well torched for much of the, the season and certainly in the playoffs. That's where they needed the help the most to be sure. Karis and, uh, Kappa forming the new center and right guard tandem in all likelihood. It, it looks like the direction the Bengals have gone so far and there's still money. And, and we'll get mm -hmm. to this either on our show later today or at the tail end of this bonus episode. The Bengals still have, I would guess, about 25 to $27 million in cap space based on what we've heard so far. So they're not breaking the bank. Now, a lot of people have asked me today, James, are these overpays? And, and you could argue that maybe, you know, it sounds like that the offer for Karras from New England was three years, 15 million, three years, 13 million in that range. He gets three years, 18 million from the Bengals. So another million per year, maybe a little bit more if the second offer was was accurate uh, for, for Kappa, maybe again, like a million dollars more than, than Tampa might have offered him. So it's not like these are huge overpays for these guys. It sounds like they're, they're taking the Bengals' preferred contract structure, which is great. But again, as we mentioned in the in the uh, Alex Kappa bonus episode, what I like here is the urgency, getting it done early in the free agency period on the interior of the offensive line, not necessarily waiting to see what's left, targeting guys that they like early on in the process. And, and they are mid-tier guys, but I think that's fine. I think that getting mid-tier guys on the offensive line is a significant upgrade in some places to what they had last year. And and as you mentioned, James, the positional versatility from Karras is is fantastic and, and really helps them if they need to stay flexible at 31 in the draft. And 
one thing that's going to help them stay flexible at 31 in the draft, in my opinion, is the retention of BJ Hill. It means that they're not going to be pigeonholed into necessarily reaching on a three technique at that spot. So let's talk about the BJ Hill uh, re-signing coming up next. But first, I have to tell you about rockauto.com because the only thing worse than having an unreliable offensive line is having unreliable transportation. And that's why you got to get to rockauto.com. You're going to save money on the same parts that the big box stores use, that the car dealerships use and charge you 30, 50, even 100% more for. So go there now, rockauto.com. See all the parts available for your car or truck. Be sure to write locked on in there. How did you hear about us box? So they know we sent you amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the car parts you will ever need. Rockauto.com. BetOnline.net also sponsoring this episode of the Locked On Bengals podcast. The college basketball tournament is here. March Madness is here. Get all the latest odds, contests, contests, player props, and more from BetOnline.net, the number one source for all your sports betting needs and information, the best spot for scores, podcasts, and news. And baseball is coming back too. So a lot of baseball stuff to look forward to as well. Go over to the website today to check out the latest trends in action at Bet Online, where the game starts. All right, James, the other deal that we have to talk about here this morning, this afternoon, depending on what time zone you're in. Definitely BJ afternoon. <laughs> yeah. Well, you never know. Maybe some people are in Hawaii, James. The BJ Hill. Back with the Cincinnati Bengals, a guy that you, well, all of us actually had as a second tier guy, a high priority, arguably the best interior defensive lineman going for his second contract on the market, turning 26 here in in the, the near future, gets $10 million a year, was projected by PFF to come in around the $9 million range. So again, maybe like a million dollars more than was expected here. But with with Larry Ogunjobi's departure, this, I don't think, should be a surprise. The Bengals were trying to bring one of these two guys back. And in my opinion, and maybe this is a hot take, I think they got the right guy, James. This was the guy that I was on extending going back to November if they had to pick one of the two. And I'm glad to see that BJ Hill will be back in Cincinnati. No doubt about it. And honestly, I think it's value. When you look at that Larry Ogunjobi deal, at least on on paper in the initial reports, three years, forty and a half million dollars for Larry O for the Bears. Well, you look at BJ Hill, three years, thirty with fifteen in year one. I'll take it, right? He's he's twenty six. He's entering his prime. Uh, he had made plenty of impact plays, fifty tackles, five and a half sacks last year in sixteen games. Uh, certainly a guy you want to keep. And the fact that you were able to keep him, and then you look at Larry Ogunjobi, and again, on paper, is he worth $10 million per, or $10 million over three years more? Is, you know, three and a half per-ish? No, I don't think so. You know, so even if it was a tie, well, then the value goes there. But I agree with you. If you had to prioritize one or the other, I thought B.J. Hill was more consistent. And, you know, the Bengals need consistency from their defensive line, certainly on the interior there, given... Uh, the lack of free agent targets. And so, uh, yeah, this this really aligns with, in their vision overall, keeping Hill, addressing the interior of their offensive line, and you hope that they still do more of that, uh, you know, addressing the line overall. Their vision appears to be what we kind of talked about for weeks here on the Locked On Bengals podcast. Now, is it the same guys? Not necessarily, but they are certainly uh, guys that we talked about. And obviously, like you mentioned, we had them signing BJ Hill. So huge get here for them. And I wonder if that 15 million in year one was their, their kind of wild card, their way to get him Trump card almost to get him to come back to Cincinnati. Cause I'm sure he had other big time offers. It sounds like he was getting interest from the Cleveland Browns, which makes keeping him all the more important. I would say because the Browns also have a need on their defensive interior. The Bengals still have a need on the defensive interior, in my opinion, looking for somebody a little bit more disruptive to take over the Larry Ogunjobi role. But BJ Hill coming back is a very versatile interior defensive line piece, similar to the way that Karras is a versatile offensive lineman. BJ Hill can play from multiple alignments, contributed as a pass rusher, was great in run defense, as you mentioned, James, consistent player, young, ascending. The Bengals will have him through his prime as well. And yeah, the 15 million maybe is a sweetener to, to finish the deal for, for BJ Hill to get him in the door, to keep him in Cincinnati. 
but it also could indicate a larger signing bonus that could indicate a more spread out cap hit, trying to push that cap hit out into the future. I am desperate to see the terms of all these deals. That's the next thing I'm waiting for. It will give us some clues as to the remainder of the Bengals' plans in free agency. And until then, we're speculating a little bit, but I would guess the Bengals, after cutting Trey Waynes and Trey Hopkins, still are sitting around $25 million in cap space, which means there's space for a guy like Lyle Collins. There's space for some more moves. And we'll see what comes next. Stick with us. We'll be back for our full show later today on Locked On Bengals, keeping you up to date with everything going on with the Bengals in free agency. Until next time, Bengals fans, hootay and have a good one.